MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles.
is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. God, we are so thankful for this day. It's a day of praise. It's a day of thanksgiving. It's a day to remind us of our own resurrections and our own lives, to be in alignment with you and with your creation. It's an opportunity for us to leave behind some of the things that have not served us well to come out of our own tombs on this Easter Sunday morning with joy and with resurrection, with a commitment to our own spirituality, to our own faith journey. And so it is with the Christ that we raise ourselves this morning as your Holy Spirit blesses us. And in that Holy Spirit, there is power to conquer death, there is power to conquer anything that we have allowed to become dominant in our lives that is not worthy of ourselves. And in that power, there is resurrection. So may God be honored as we worship this morning, as we celebrate this morning, and as we make a commitment to be a resurrected people, an Easter people, with the power of Jesus. We pray all these things and yet so much more. In the name of that risen Christ. Amen. God bless you this morning. Please be seated. It is as always, but more especially this morning, a joy to welcome you to worship as we gather in this house of God's praise uh, and to celebrate the Easter resurrection. A joy to welcome you, especially if you are worshiping with us for the very first time this morning, uh, because we know that you have a choice in worshiping communities, but we are just delighted that you are present with us today. I wonder if you would indulge my spirit, if indeed you're with us for the very first time today. I wonder if you would just raise your hand and keep it up for a moment so that we can see you, uh, so that we can welcome you specifically to worship today. Our ushers will get to you, but please do accept this brochure and a flower as our way of acknowledging your presence amongst us. Uh, inside the brochure, you'll find more information about our church. You'll also find a welcome card that's designed specifically for you. Uh, later on the service, we do receive an offering, and we invite you to place those welcome cards directly into the offering plates. Uh, they do ask for some personal information, and I can assure you that those cards will come directly to me. My name is Reverend Dr. Neil Thomas. I'm the senior pastor of our congregation. But along with every single person that surrounds you in this sanctuary this morning, whether they've been here one time or a thousand times, we truly believe that we try to embody the presence of Christ in the world. And so we enjoy and invite you on this wonderful spiritual journey that God invites us onto this morning. Welcome to you. You'll note that the ushers have passed out the welcome tablets, so please do pass those along the road this morning. Important for us to know that all members and friends and attenders have been to church this morning, um, and so it's really important that you fill that in for us. Uh, it's also important for us to know how we may be able to minister effectively one to the other. So if you're in need of a member of staff to give you a call this week, uh, please do note that on the welcome tablet, and we'll make sure that someone follows up with you as soon as possible. Uh, also, if, but if you're in need of emergency pastoral care today, uh, we don't want you to leave without knowing that you are loved, that you are cared for, and that you are special. So please note that you can see any one of us that served on the dais this morning, and we'll be delighted to spend a few moments with you following worship, and then if need be, make a follow-up appointment with you. As you came in this morning, our ushers were busy uh, handing out the orders of worship, and so you'll find today's order of worship on the front, and inside you'll find uh, all of the announcements for today and for the upcoming weeks. Um, not everything that we do is announced from the pulpit, so it really is important that you take your orders of worship home with you to mark on your calendars the events that you wish to participate in, and then join us um, as community as we build one another in the presence and love of Christ. There are a few announcements that we do have for you this morning, and so if you would just bear with me as I just take you through those announcements today. Uh, first of all, would uh, remind you that following worship today, uh, we do have our annual Easter egg hunt. Um, it will be for uh, primarily uh, for kids 12 and under. Um, and I, I know I say that in our congregation, but you know, I know that most of us have this inner child that at this time of the year, we just want to let out. And um, I'm going to let you let it out this morning, but I'm also going to encourage you, that for those who actually are 12 and under, um, 
if you would just give them a head start um, so that they could find the Easter eggs uh, following worship, that would be really grateful. Um, that would be directly after the 11 o'clock service. Our home groups are meeting across the city, and we are just excited by how many home groups we have up and down the Los Angeles County. Uh, we have a couple of new ones that are about to begin. Uh, first of all, we have one in Covina and Pomona on the first and third Thursday of the month. Um, and you can tell the convener is actually in the choir this morning. Um, and we have another one that's uh, about to begin in Long Beach. Uh, and so we want you to know um, that those groups are about to begin. If you actually look in your orders of worship, you will find a list of all the home groups on the back page. Um, and we want you to sign up if you would like to become a part of a home group. It is the way in which we make connection as part of the community outside of a Sunday. So please do think about setting, uh, meeting and going to one of our home groups. And you can sign up this morning. Scott Hill uh, will be in the lobby following worship. And uh, I know that he'll be delighted to talk to you about those home groups uh, and where they are located around the city. Another way in which we build community in our congregation is not just through uh, the language that we share, but also in the languages that perhaps we don't share. And we are just so excited about one of the groups that are beginning to meet, uh, our 4G group, uh, which is God's grace given through the gospel. Everybody has their favorite group, right? So, um, so God's grace given through the, gos uh, through the gospel is a Bible study in Tagalog and in English, and they meet on the second and fourth Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. Uh, they serve Filipino snacks at 6.30, although if you have attended, um, those snacks feel like a full four-course dinner to me. Um, so um, you know, please do join with them for Filipino snacks at 6.30, and uh, then Bible study at 7. On Wednesday evenings, of course, we gather for our regular uh, spiritual enrichment classes. Uh, we begin at 6.30 with prayer and uh, meditation here in the sanctuary. And then at 7.30, the choir rehearse in the sanctuary and Bible study uh, happens in the fellowship hall. Uh, this week, we are beginning a new Bible study uh, entitled, Has Jesus Visited You Lately? Um, and on April the 11th, we'll be in the upper room, uh, April the 18th on the road, and on April the 25th at the beach. Now, that's not where they're going to be located. They will be in the fellowship hall, but we'll be looking at Jesus meeting us on the upper room, on the road, and at the beach, just in case anyone didn't understand my variation of English. <laughs> the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence will be meeting uh, with us on Friday, April the 13th. Uh, they are doing a fundraiser for the tribe, which is our young adults group, and uh, they will be uh, leading us in bingo. Um, so that will be on April the 13th at 7.30. Please join the tribe for that great evening and also to meet the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Um, it feels a difficult way to end announcements on the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence on Easter Sunday morning, uh, but... Oh, well, here we go. So let's turn to one another now and offer a sign of peace and welcome. We're in the right place this morning. God bless you. Our scripture reading is taken from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18, from the Holy Book, New International Version. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken Jesus out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple 
outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well, as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white. Seated where Jesus' head had been, one had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken, they have taken Jesus away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended. To my Go instead to my disciples and tell them, I am ascending to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen Jesus. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Hear what the Spirit says today.
As we prepare to receive the word, would you please just show your appreciation not only to our music department who've done exceptional work this, uh, this uh, Easter. And I'm going to be thanking a few people so you can hold your applause to the end uh, to thank our uh, video and web and design team and all those who work in the soundboard, to our ushers, to, um, uh, to, to, to Larry and to Bruce who just created a wonderful sanctuary for us this morning uh, and to every single person who's contributed to this season of Lent and Holy Week. We really are appreciative. Let's give them a round of applause. And just so that we know this morning, not only is our sanctuary full, not only is our balcony full, but we have overflow seating in the lobby. And so I'm going to ask our ushers, I know we don't usually do this, but I want to open the doors um, so that they can uh, see in. um, And that's really helpful. And also to welcome um, all of those who are worshiping with us on the internet this morning. I want to make sure that those who, honestly, what a sacrifice to sit in the lobby and watch this on a big screen. Uh, Just to have those doors open just helps me connect with the folks who perhaps can't see me literally in this building. So we're just so grateful. Let's come to God in prayer this morning. Loving and embracing and holy one, we thank you that you raised Jesus up, up from the dead to conquer to show us that death did not have a sting, that there was something after death and raised us not only to experience life after death, but to experience life in life, life in this very moment, honored and treasured life, to enable this life to become all that it can be, knowing that in those final days when we too will ascend to be with you, there is a life after life. So bless us this morning as we come into this sacred house. Bless us with life this morning and enable us to feel that resurrected joy within our own hearts and in our own minds and within our own bodies. Enable us to experience resurrection this day. And so almighty God, as we have sung and as the choir has brought special music to us, as we have heard your word, as we have now come into this sacred space, May we open our hearts and our minds, the tombs of our own lives, to the resurrection of your joy. And now, Almighty God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that are upon my heart and upon my mouth, and may they be shaped now in such a way that what is given is directly from you. Bless my lips of clay, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what a journey it's been for us over these last few weeks as we have journeyed through Lent and bring ourselves into Holy Week and now uh, to Easter Sunday morning. What a journey it's been as we have journeyed to our own crosses, to those experiences of our own lives. What a journey it's been with Jesus over this last week. We've experienced some incredible services some incredible moments, and some of you have been able to participate and in one and in some and in all, but it's been a, an incredible journey. We started on Wednesday evening this week with our Seder, uh, where 40 folks gathered in the lobby of our church for a traditional Seder meal. And I have to say, it was probably one of the best Seder meals that we've had in our church, uh, a fully catered Seder meal. Uh, see, we're moving on up. Uh, what, what, a, what, a, what a great way to be able to do that and to remind ourselves of the Jewish roots that we have. You know, this weekend is also Passover for our Jewish friends, and so we, we honor that tradition and we thank the traditions of our past that bring us into this moment. A wonderful Seder meal. And then on Thursday evening, and if you were able to be here, this whole sanctuary was rearranged into a seating in the round. And members of Mount Hollywood Congregational Church, the United Church of Christ, joined us in our church here for our annual foot and hand washing and communion to remind us of how Jesus got down in service and knelt before his disciples and washed their feet. And it was very moving to watch members of our congregation wash the feet of another congregation and to be of service and to be reminded that we are connected as the body of Christ, that we're not separate just because we carry a different name, 
but that we are one in Christ Jesus and how moving it was to have them in our sanctuary. And then on Friday, gathering here at uh, 7 o'clock to process the cross from this campus to our new campus on Prospect Avenue. Uh, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 folks gathered here at this church and processed the cross over to a moving experience of being in that new space. Now, we were just there for the one-off. It was just there for that one fri- uh, Friday, and we're not moving there tomorrow, so please make sure you come back here next week. Uh, But we will be moving uh, in the next few weeks, and so keep your eyes open on the website and subscribe to the newsletter so that you know when we will be physically moving to our new property. Well, what a joy it was to be able to be in that sacred space. And again, to join with the congregation that formerly owned that building, the United Church of Christ that were with us on Maundy Thursday. And what was so moving about that experience was hearing the parallels of the theology that both the United Church of Christ, that particular congregation, and our congregation, blending together in such wonderful and powerful ways, sharing our stories and our testimonies of those last seven words of Jesus as he was taken to the cross. But more than just those seven words, bringing them into a contemporary understanding of what it means to journey to our crosses to think about immigration, poverty, those who are less fortunate than ourselves, from our Filipino community to remind us of human trafficking that continues to happen globally and and affects us around the world, to think about the way in which our shared ministry of HopeNet between our two congregations, now feeding uh, more than 90 families every Saturday morning out of our new location incredible testimony to the way in which we remind ourselves that Jesus died for all of those things, not just for the things that affected his community, but that that same Jesus is present with us today, sharing in our suffering, but calling us to create change in the world, calling us through our own resurrected bodies to make a difference, to be of service to the world. You see, following the Christian faith is not one of ego. Following the Christian faith is one of surrendering ego to that place of service in order that Christ might be revealed in each and every one of us. We talk about how we are being the hands and the feet and the heart and the life and every other part of Jesus' body is centered in each and every one of us. And that happens when we come as resurrected bodies as we come as bodies that have been able to shed the things that are no longer of noose and need for us and bring us out of our own tombs into this new day of Easter. And then yesterday, some of us were able to take some time off and just to reflect on what did this week mean? What does it mean for us? And now today, Easter Sunday, a celebration and a joy of the resurrected Christ. But sometimes I do feel that we we celebrate the resurrected Christ of 2,000 years ago rather than celebrating the resurrected Christ who is in us and through us and lives with us in this church this morning. I truly believe that the resurrection of Christ is just not a historical experience. It's an experience that we can bring to life any day that we choose to, any moment that we choose to. But this Easter day reminds us that we too have resurrected bodies. We too have our own stories of of suffering. We too have our own stories of being nailed to the cross. We too have our own stories of going into the tomb. May not be just for three days, for some it's been three years or three months or maybe 30 years. Going into those tombs. And today we're invited to get rid of the stone and to stand up in our bodies and let us out. I'm going to just ask the usher if they would go and find out who's knocking on the door on the side because it could be Jesus wanting to come in out of the tomb this morning. Wouldn't that be a shock for me? Oh. Now I know he'd be in the right place, but uh, coming out of our tombs and into this sacred space, I promise you that was not timed. God is good, huh? Yeah, believes in miracles, believes in the risen Christ. But we come this morning to remind ourselves that we can rise up from our own doom and despair any time we choose to. You know, last week we talked about how we use this opportunity 
to take into the tomb with Jesus on Good Friday the things that have not served us well. The things that we hold on to. The things that in some ways have become habit and have become comfortable to us. And yet they are still things that cause us pain and trouble and cause us to seek out thousands of hours of therapy in our lives. That we have been called, we have this opportunity to be able to take that into the tomb with Jesus and to leave it there. You, you see, there were things that were of no benefit to the resurrected Jesus himself. And if you were careful to read the scriptures this morning or to hear the scripture, you would have known that there were some things that Jesus left behind in the tomb. Now, now they weren't things that were left there so that those who went in would see that they were left behind uh, so that they would, might be able to see and to believe. They were left there because they were of no use to Jesus. There was no use of his resurrected body for the, the, for the towel that had uh, surrounded his head. There was no need for him for those linen clothes that were there for his burial. Jesus' re- resurrected body was free of all of the things that we tend to surround ourselves with. And it was free because it needed to be resurrected. We have an opportunity to leave our linen clothes in the tomb this morning. Now, that doesn't mean that we should all start getting undressed. Well, maybe some of us. But anyway, (laughs) the reality of the story is to remind us to leave behind, to let it go, to lay it down, and not to pick it back up again. You see, so many of us are really good at picking stuff back up again. You know, we, we go through these rituals every year of, of, of talking about how we divest ourselves. We, we talk about those things that are of no use to us. You know, the, the things that people have labeled us with. The, the, the things that people have uh, uh, ostracized us because of. All those things that so often I think that we are really good at this victim mentality. Really good at this poor me mentality, this pity party mentality. Now, that's not to say that some of us have good reason for that. You know, some of us have gone through a lot of trauma in our lives. And some of us are struggling to find our way out. Sometimes I think that we're in that post-traumatic phase of the trauma that has happened to us in our lives. But there's also those of us, and you know who you are, I know my pieces in all this. But I know that there are some pieces in my life that have become so habit-formed, so a part of me, that I often wonder what it would be like if they weren't a part of me. Would I be able to survive? Would I be able to really live into this new day? Would I really be able to be effective in this new moment of my own life if the things that have become so comfortable to me were no longer a part of them? You know know some of the things that, that I'm talking of. I think of some of the things in my own life. And on this Holy Week, I began to think about what are the things that I want to leave in the tomb? What are the things that I want to leave behind? What are some of the things that I've held on to that have not served me very well? Resentments. Anybody else have resentments? Am I the only one? Oh, there's hands going up all over the place. Praise God. So, but <laughs> otherwise I'd feel a little bit silly just up here acknowledging my shortcomings. But resentments. You know, we hold on to resentments long before they need to be let go of. You know, I, I recently was talking to somebody about how forgiveness is such a difficult thing to give. Such a difficult thing to let go of. And I, and I talked to them about how so often uh, the thing that we need to forgive is ourselves. That so often the things that we need to let go of is the things that we continue to hold on to when we perhaps hurt other people. What would it be like when you go back to those folks and you apologize for the thing that you think you're holding on to and then they look at you and say, when did you do that? (laughs) And we've been holding on to this stuff for so long. Resentments. Unresolved relationships. The things that we hold on to that quite honestly don't serve us very well. What would it be like if we left those linen clothes behind in the tomb this morning and stepped out into a new freedom of a resurrected life? Jealousies. That's a big one. 
Many of us are jealous sometimes of the things that other people have that we think we should have in our own lives. Instead of celebrating with one another, we hold them against one another. What would it be like if we could just be free of jealousy this morning and just allowing ourselves to be the fully created human beings that God has created us to be and to leave those in the tomb this morning? You know, sometimes I get a little jealous of those who have good fashion sense. And, you know, I, I think I've told you this before, but, you know, one of my, my, best, my best gay male friend had to take me to one side one day and said, you know, we've got to talk about your wardrobe. <laughs> you know, wearing stripes and plaids is not a good mix. I, you know, I didn't know that. I, I, I don't know if I just didn't get that gene or something, but, you know, so you had to take me to one side. Now it's much, much better. Well, sometimes. But, but I, you know, on Easter Sunday morning when I look around at some of the fabulous, fabulous clothes that people wear. I want to tell you, if I could get away with that, honey, I'd tell you. Fabulous, fabulous. I don't often see you in a suit collar and tie, Master Skip. But I tell you, you look pretty good this morning. And let me think, Miss Dawn. God, I saw you walking up the street this morning and I thought the church across the road was going to come over. Resurrection joy. <laughs> now, I could comment on everyone's clothing this morning, but I'm not going to. It's far too long. But, but friends, I really want us to experience resurrection joy this morning. To let go of the things that have not served us. And to stand fully and bold and upright just in the glory of who we are. Who we are as individuals. Not resenting others or jealous of others, but just so secure in who we are as the people of God, as the people that God created us to be. And that is the joy of resurrection. That's the joy of allowing the presence of the holy to be within us. Because when we allow the presence of the holy to be within us, we are good enough. We are worthy enough. We are blessed enough. And that we don't allow or need to allow anyone else to steal that joy from us in our own lives. We are called to be a people of power and a people of praise and to allow those linens to stay in the tomb where they belong so that the stone, when it's rolled back over in front of it, takes it away forever and leaves it in the place that it needs to be, gone. Hmm, what a joyous world it would be if we could seriously learn that lesson this morning. If we could seriously experience resurrection joy in each and every one of our bodies and allow ourselves to dwell in the presence of God. That's what the disciples and Mary and all those who followed Jesus came to understand. It wasn't about following a set of rules or a set of dogmas. It was about experiencing the Christ within each and every one of us, just as Christ would make Christ's self revealed to us, and allowing that to be enough, to be it, to be. Let the linen clothes stay where they need to go, and allow you and me this morning to rise up in fullness of power and fullness of glory, knowing that death has lost its sting, that we are a forgiven and a forgiving people, that we are a joy-filled people, that we don't need to hold on to anything that has not served us. And then when it's gone, find the things of the Spirit that will refill us up with that resurrection power, peace compassion, love, understanding, the purest of all the gifts of all of the religions that have ever been created. Those are the gifts of the resurrected Christ offers us this morning from the resurrected body of the tomb and enables us to have life and life in abundance. Just 
as we are. May we experience that resurrection joy, not just for this moment. Because sometimes it's easy when we're in this, this room and in this place. But may we experience it when we're prepared to go back out into the world and others might bash us and others might speak ill of us and things might happen that might cause us to build those resentments and those jealousies one more time and bring ourselves back to this moment in our church, in our lives and bring us once again to the freedom of the resurrected body. We don't have to wait till next Easter to do this all over again. We can do it every day that we can experience resurrection. So may God allow us this morning to let the linens be the linens and let ourselves be resurrected in the presence of Christ. Let us pray. Holy and blessed, we are so holy and so blessed and we thank you. We thank you for the example of Jesus. We thank you for raising him from the dead. We thank you for the experience of Mary and the others who came to find Jesus that day and who found the linen clothes left in the tomb. No use to Jesus anymore. And so we invite ourselves to find those things that are of no benefit to us anymore and leave them in the sealed tomb and allow ourselves and our bodies, our minds, our souls, our hearts, every piece and fiber of our lives to be resurrected this morning with joy and with hope and with the knowledge that as we let those things go, so you can fill us up anew with those gifts that you so often want to pour out upon us. Joy and love and peace and harmony, acceptance, and to enable us to become the people of God just as we are, step by step, moving to become the likeness of Christ himself on this earth, this day. May that be our commission as a church and as a people of faith. We ask these things and yet so much more in the name of the risen Christ who lives in each of us, this day and every day. Amen.
What a beautiful Easter it is, isn't it? Gorgeous day, full church, overflowing church. Welcome to those of you on the internet. It's been a busy week. Uh, As you've heard earlier, we started out on Wednesday with our wonderful Seder and then our hand of foot washing on Thursday. And then Friday, we moved between our two campuses carrying the cross from here to uh, Prospect Avenue. Got a day off, and here we are today. We couldn't do it without each and every one of you, without your faithfulness, without the pledges that you have made. And if you haven't yet made one, there's still time. See an usher, and you can get a a form to do that. Your faithfulness enables us to feed the hungry, to help the needy, to be here week in and week out to worship with you and with the over 30 people that are watching us right now or 30 different households. We have no idea how many people there are. Uh, on the Internet Live. And you can help us on the Internet also. You have a donate button. (laughs) In all seriousness, uh, we have a wonderful church here. We have a wonderful, vibrant set of ministries, and we appreciate your support and ask for it once again this week. We'll be taking a second offering today uh, also. It is to support the Global Justice Ministry of Metropolitan Community Churches, our denomination. As you know, I'm uh, board chair of SoulForce, so I have a real heart for justice work. And the work that Reverend Pat Baumgartner, how many people know her? Quite a few. Reverend Pat Baumgartner is senior pastor of MCC New York and leads the denomination's justice ministry. Uh, She's led it in Eastern Europe and Romania. She's led it in Jamaica. She's led it, importantly, in Uganda and many, many other parts of the world where justice is sorely lacking. And if you can be as generous as you possibly can in the second offering, uh, we'll be passing that along to the denomination for that very important work. And now if you'll pray with me. God, we're so grateful that you got us out of bed this morning. We're grateful for this beautiful day and the many, many things that you do in our lives and in the world, never more so than on this special day, Easter Sunday. We ask your blessings on the offerings that are about to be taken and the work that will be done with them, and we ask it all, especially today, in the name of your Son, the risen Christ. Amen. They looked at him and saw A simple man, a carpenter with healing in his hands. They saw him calm the sea and heal a dying man. They saw, but could they really understand? They could not, they could not, though they tried, they could not. He was just a simple carpenter with healing in his hands, but could they really understand? that they heard. They wondered at the mystery of his word. They wondered what he meant about a maker's plan. They heard, but could they really understand? about a 
maker's plan but could they really understand they could not so finally upon a rugged cross they killed the one who would not suffer loss and when at last they took what willingly he gave he died but could they keep him in the grave they could not they could not though they tried they could not and when at last they took from him what willingly he gave could they keep him in the grave could they keep him in the grave could they keep him in the grave Could they keep him in the grave? Could they keep him in the grave? Could they keep him in the grave? They could not. They could not. about they could not Mm -hmm. they could not keep Christ they could not keep Jesus they could not give keep the Messiah in the grave this is about so many moments in our lives of what they could not do for us where they could not keep us or hold us or name us or claim us something different than what we were and what we are in Christ they could not So this prayer this morning is about what they could not and what we can do and who we are in Christ. This is a living prayer. My life has been transformed for the 20 years I've been a part of the MCC movement. Mm -hmm. That one strange day at MCC Los Angeles trying to get in the door, but I came in and they could not. Mm -hmm. And even this morning, I want to share with my spiritual community, it has been announced to my church in MCC of Northern Virginia, Fairfax, that I will be serving as their interim pastor in the next few days. Amen. 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 Yes. So today is about a resurrection and how you can be changed just by getting up. And so our prayer this morning, if you will join with me in spirit, we're going to pray about getting up. We're going to pray about Mm -hmm. the ways in which we, however it looks and feels right now, will not be the same after we leave and as we are sitting even in this moment in our seats. So Spirit of the living God, we just thank you for getting up. Mm -hmm. We even thank Sister Mary for coming in the tomb and saying, he's not here. Where is he? And going to tell the story. We thank you, Spirit, for just showing up to give her a little touch and a little nudge to know that she too had been a part of an experience that she was valuable. So thank you. Thank you for all the people who felt like they were nothing in the beginning, that Christ showed them and demonstrated in their lives that they were something. So we thank you for getting up. We thank you for those strangers who just sat in that upper room experience, being strange, wondering who they were, Mm -hmm. thinking they were only going to be fishers of a few people. And look, 2,000 years ago, look at the ways in which all over this world today, people get up to acknowledge the risen Christ. Oh, whether you think it was a physical resurrection, whether you believe it was just a spiritual move, whatever you may be, what you have to acknowledge, people's lives have been changed. Mm -hmm. 
We may call it cancer one moment, but we do know that they get up. We do know there is healing in the name of Jesus. We do know that there are people who are looking for jobs and that it looks like that someone has told them that they are perhaps too old, too short, too whatever they are, and that they're no longer, no longer valuable. But we know that they have been given gifts and skills and talents that are always offered to the world if they're willing to accept. We thank you for those gifts that they have that they get to offer to the world. We thank you for just homes and food and just the ways in which we will not leave this place Mm -hmm. the same, that we are transformed by this, this moment to pause and say, thank you, God, for getting up. Oh, we offer prayers even today in Latin America as Reverend Elder Hector Guterres is an affirmed as an elder in our denomination. We look to for look forward to the next two weeks when the Reverend Elder Dr. Mona West is affirmed. We just thank you for those who have stepped in those ecclesial roles to serve our denomination and touch our lives. So again, we will not be the same. We just thank you for this staff who serves tireless, tirelessly. And we just thank you for their willingness to offer their selves. Yes, they have their down moments, but they get up. They get up. And so in the many ways in which we all offer, as Maya says, I I rise. Mm -hmm. And so we rise today to claim the glory of Christ, all that we are, 2012, Mm -hmm. that this day forward, we will claim that the spirit of the living God is in us. And we offer that that love to whoever we meet. In the mighty name of Jesus, the living and the risen Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Indeed, a risen Christ. But a few days before he went into that tomb, he shared a meal. He shared a meal with his followers that our Jewish brothers and sisters celebrated last night, the Passover meal. And as we shared here on Wednesday, and we're reminded that the bread that he broke was the dessert of that meal. It's the afikomen. At the beginning of the meal, the matzah is broken. And then a piece is hidden, and then the children at the very end find it. I think there's children who found it in here, aren't there? Where are they? Yes, Charlie and Gabe, they found it earlier, and they're going to bring it. Thank you. And, and the tradition is, is that the children get a treat for finding it. He's like... Because if it wasn't for the children, Jesus wouldn't have been able to complete the meal. (laughs) Amen? Amen. And so it is that Jesus took the afikomen, the dessert of that Seder supper. And he raised it to his God. And he blessed it. And he broke it. And he shared it with all who were gathered there as it is shared with you and with me this day. Here, take, eat of this. This is my body. This is all of who I am. Our foremothers baked this bread as they were fleeing Egypt. Hmm. And I ask that you eat of this in remembrance of all that they gave and all that I gave to you. And in a similar fashion, he took a cup. It could have been the third cup. It could have been the fourth cup of the Seder Supper. Many say it was the fourth, which was the Elijah cup. And he raised it and he asked blessings upon it and he passed it to those who were gathered there as it is Pass to you and to me this day. See, the Elijah cup was to be touched by no one except the Messiah. And he did. Amen. Yes. And he passed it amongst all of those who were there. Here, take and drink from this cup. For you indeed are my brothers and sisters in this journey. Take and drink fully, for this is the new covenant. Just as a covenant was made with Noah in the form of a rainbow. Hmm. This cup was given to us, a covenant of new life for sins to be forgiven, for lives to be resurrected. Hmm. Let us pray. Uh, We pray for this 
meal, this bread, and this juice. Allow it to be a meaningful experience for each person. Allow each person who conceives, consumes this, these elements to be transformed, knowing that Christ is alive and present. Yes. And so no one is turned away from this meal. Yes. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. My friends, at that meal, that last supper, he shared that meal with everyone. Everyone. The children, the adults, the good, the bad, everyone. If Pilate was there, he would have shared it with him too. Amen? And we follow in those footsteps. This is an open communion. We here at MCC LA with all MCCs around the world share and celebrate an open communion. That means you need not be a member of this church or of any church to come forward and partake of these elements. We simply ask that you come seeking, one step at a time. The ushers are going to guide us to stations that will be located around the sanctuary. And when you come to us, the servers, it's our tradition to take the elements, dip in a non-alcoholic grape juice, place it upon your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive yourself, and then we offer a brief blessing. If you would like one or the other or both, let us know so that we might serve you well. And if you would like to receive of the elements this morning, just, but just between you and your creator, there will be a station of consecrated elements to your right in the alcove to which you might go at any time during communion to partake. See, we try to make it so you can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> but if for some reason you don't want to come forward, please still commune. Commune. Be in prayer with the one who loves you most. For it's a time to join our heart, our mind, our soul, God, with one another. So let's keep this feast. Amen? Amen. The ushers will guide us and the servers and the acolytes will join.
So friends, as we prepare to leave this place, can I remind us that the stone that was rolled away finally did seal the grave. And so left behind, sealed for good, were the grave clothes of Jesus. Whatever we decided to put in that tomb, let us roll the stone back and seal it forever so that we no longer have to carry it, but rather claim new life this morning. So as we close worship, first we celebrate with Reverend Onetta as she begins to do new ministry in MCC and Nova. And I wish to share other good news with you this morning. This week, Metropolitan Community Church of Los Angeles and their campus at 4953 Franklin Avenue went under contract and we are now in escrow to sell this building. It is a minor miracle in this economy, but we have uh, gone under contract. Um, I'm not able to tell you to whom, um, and I apologize for that, but please do trust me um, in this process. Um, Any of you who have sold real estate uh, know that these first few weeks are sometimes the most tenuous of them. So pray for the board, uh, pray for us, Uh, pray more specifically for the board because tomorrow I leave for two weeks on vacation Um, (laughs) and for Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois, um, who knows how to get hold of me just in case. God is good and all the time. Let's go out into the world now and proclaim the freedom of our lives. Amen. Today, Jesus got up. MCCLA, today we have a new home. MCCLA, today we're selling our old home. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good.
to God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given in the blessing of God known as creator, savior and holy spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore Amen, Amen. Amen. Y'all come back now <laughs> Participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You 